Here it is, everybody. The Blue Network sensational hit program, The Land of the Lost, with presents for lucky winners and a grand splash drawing contest at the end of the show. The Blue Network presents The Land of the Lost. And its discoverer, the well-known storyteller, Isabel Manning Hewson. Comes of the things people are always losing. Umbrellas, toys, collar buttons, and all sorts of big and little treasures that disappear never to return again. Well, I can tell you. They go to an enchanted kingdom at the bottom of the sea called the Land of the Lost. Finny denizens of the deep guard this kingdom, and the wisest of them all is Red Lantern, the talking fish. We used to take my brother Billy and me exploring there every week. We'd start from the lake near our house and follow him down, down through an underwater tunnel where a fast ocean current would pick us up. This Saturday, we were on our way as usual. Oh, Red Lantern, I'm so glad you were on time this morning. Why, scupper my uppers, Isabel. I'm always on time. I guess we'd have just about popped if you hadn't been. Well, as I live and twinkle, you're an anxious-looking pair of polywogs. Anything wrong? Not with us, Red Lantern. It's the little kid next door, Dick Brown. He's lost the most valuable thing he and ever... And we thought you might help us find it. No, no, no. Haul in your mainful there, Tadpoles. Have you forgotten that it's against the rules to bring anything back from the land of the lost? But it's terribly important, Red Lantern. The whole neighborhood's upset. Uh, that's too bad, but uh, what's missing, anyway? Dick's brand new bond. Huh? A war savings bond. A war savings bond? Leaking life savings. But, hey, that is important. I'll say. Well, the poor little fellow's only had it about a week. He saved all the money for the stamps himself. And he was so proud to have a bond of his very own, even if it was just a baby one. Yeah, he called it My Pal Bondy. Well, we just got to find it, Red Lantern. Uh, did, uh, did Dick write down the serial number of his bond? No, I don't think so. Was he supposed to? Was he supposed to? Of course he was. Everybody's supposed to do that. It's just common sense. Oh, well, I'll do the best I can for you, small fry. You won't be allowed to take it back, you know. Oh, gee. But if it has come in, we can get the number, and I understand there's a chap named Morgenthau up there on Earth who can issue a new bond in his place. Oh, I knew you'd help us, Red Lantern. Yes, uh, there comes an express train now. Get ready to hop on. Next stop, Land of the Lost. But, but where to then, Red Lantern? To the place where all lost bonds go, Billy. All aboard for the bond wagon. Aboard! Sorry, it didn't take us long to get to the land of the lost today. And the magic curtain never let us in so quickly before. Oh, that curtain always rises to a sea emergency, Isabel. But keep paddling, we're almost there. You see that gate just ahead? You mean in that big high fence? Oh, uh, right. It's not an ordinary fence. More like a stockade. It is a stockade, Billy. That is the entrance to the stockyard. Stockyard? Here? Oh, why not? They have yards of stock in the stockyard. <laughs> well, here we are. I'll ring the bell. My goodness, it sounds just like a cash register. Certainly. Only it registers visitors instead of nickels and dimes. Well, dribble in. The gate's opening. What kind of a machine is that, Red Lantern? A stock picker. Now, write your names on that long red tape that comes out of it. That's it. Red tape? I always wondered what it was. Well, just a formality. They like to keep a record, too, you know. Now, uh, I'll sign. Announcing three visitors to the stockyard, uh, Isabel, uh, Billy, and Red Lantern. Follow me, Tadpole. Emily, this is a huge place. And look at the crowds of paper folks shuffling around. Uh, they're all lost stock, Billy, every one of them. Oh, mercy, people are awfully careless. Well, 
welcome, friends. Uh, welcome to the stockyard. Uh, you're Isabel, I presume. Why, yes, but who are you? <laughs> who am I, she says. Hey, can't you tell by the sound? Uh, I'm a promoter, of course. A promoter? Yeah, who is the name? And I've got just what you're looking for. This way. Oh, you mean my pal Bondi is here? I never heard of him, Adam. I'm talking about a neat little speculation in mining stocks. Uh, now, we... never mind that, Huey. We're on our way through to the bond wagon. The bond wagon? Eh, why go there? Because uh, we have to... You want to get rich quick, don't you, buddy? Well, don't... Well, listen, boy. I got... That's me, eh? Oh, motor. The bond wagon's a slow way, buddy. Now, you take my tip and... Oh, hey. Bless me, what's that? Over there in the cage? Well, that's just the wildcat stock. Oh, Joe, let's go near them, please. All right, all right, if you say so, madam. But some people find them wildcats very attractive. Uh, they ought to have their heads examined. Yeah, but how about this group of uh, oil stocks, the Gusher Boys? They'd be glad to let some new investors into their pool... Wouldn't you, fellas? Yeah. Yeah, come on in. The profit's fine. We simply ooze dividends. Listen, I'm your geyser. No, no, not today, thanks. We're looking for something quite different. Ah, still hopping on your pearl bunny, eh? Well, I see it's no use my wasting time on you. If you'll pardon me, I've got some stock that needs your water, eh? Gosh, he wasn't much help. I don't see how we're ever going to find Bondi and all this... Billy! Listen, don't you hear music? Yeah, it's coming from right over there. Oh, let's get closer. Hey, look, a great big enormous house on wheels. Painted red and gold and green and blue. With a brass band out in front. What is it, Red Lantern? What is it? Why, that's the bond wagon. <laughs> Bond wagon conductor, of course. Hello there, Bondo. Well, yes, me, and if it's not Red Lantern, howdy. And these two earth friends of mine, Isabel and Billy. How do you Hello. do, Mr. Conductor? I suppose you've come to get tickets for the excursion, eh? What excursion, sir? Why, the bond drive. What else? I'm going to take the old wagon out rolling again pretty soon. I'd like a ticket, mister. Okay, round trips only, of course. Don't you sell any one-way tickets at all, Bondo? No, sir, we do not. The bond wagon guarantees its passengers a safe return for their money. Uh, you see there, Tadpole? That's more than your Mr. Promoter could offer. Well, Bondo, everything in your department up to par? Uh, frankly, Red Lantern, we're kind of disturbed around here. Indeed. Oh, there have been some queer doings lately. Oh, well, what's the trouble? Someone, we don't know who, has been cutting coupons off our most distinguished securities while they were asleep. Good heaven. And that's not all, Red. This prowler, whoever he is, seems to take delight in wantonly slashing off the identification numbers from his victims. Gosh. Well, you can imagine the confusion it's thrown us into. Shocking. Why, a thing like that is liable to create a panic if you're not careful. Just what I'm afraid of. I'm doing my best to keep the bonds stabilized. But it's mighty alarming to know there's a clipper loose among us. Oh, I do hope nothing's happened to Bondi. Wouldn't it be dreadful if his 
number was gone when we came all this way to get it. Oh, beg pardon? Uh, who's this you're talking about? It's the bond we're hunting for. Do you know him, sir? He's a little fellow, and he goes by the name of my pal Bondy. Uh, uh, quite a recent arrival. I don't remember seeing him. Uh, what's his number? Gosh, that's just what we don't know. Well, come aboard the wagon, and we'll try to check. I'm sure we can fix you up with something. Bonds are a dime a dozen down here. Now, just step inside. I'll, I'll lead the way. <laughs> There they are, kid. Lost bonds to the tune of, oh, Neptune knows how many millions. Oh, my, but they're big and important looking. Oh, they're solid citizens, all right. You mean they were? The Red Lantern? Who's that gloomy-looking character? They call me Mortgage. You've heard of me. Don't sell the old homestead. <laughs> oh, why don't you call yourself in, Mortgage? We don't want you moping around. I can't help moping. Nobody takes any interest in me. Oh, it's not that, Mr. Mortgage. We're looking for someone else. Your young friend wouldn't be in this section of the wagon, Isabel. I listed all these folks only yesterday. Uh, come back here and I'll open the inner room. That's a funny door with a round silver knob in the middle. Oh, don't you see, Isabel? It's like a big safe. You're right, young feller. That's the entrance to where the safe investments are. I hope you haven't forgotten the combination, Bondo. Oh, don't worry, Mortgage. There we are. Now come ahead and meet the real gilt edge set. Bond Street High Society. My gracious, this thing. get a lean on you. You'll never shake him off. Uh, please, Mr. Morgan. Oh, all right. Whoever said loan, sweet loan. <laughs> Attention all. Uh, these visitors are looking for a newcomer known as Bondy. My pal, Bondy. Uh, anybody seen him? Uh, pardon me, can you describe the individual? Well, I understand he's a little chap, Mrs. Gilson. Mm. A sort of a baby bond. Oh, one of those insignificant creatures. Then we would know him. Certainly not. I'm surprised oh, you should... Help! 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 help. I've been wrong. The leaping certificate has happened again. You mean the clipper? My coupons, they're gone. $50 in coupons. Oh, stop fluctuating, Sterling Worth. Uh, how did it happen? I just woke up from a little nap. Felt rather queer around the margin. I looked down and the whole bottom row of my coupons was missing. <laughs> oh, this is horrible. We're all in danger. Every one of us. Whose turn will it be uh, next? Quiet. We'll search the entire bond wagon at once. This vandal has got to be found. Uh, Red Lantern, will uh, you come with me? Certainly, Bondo. Are uh, you children kindly wait in that little counting room? In here? Uh, yes, please. Come on, Isabel. A uh, Morgan, uh, take yeah. the rest of the securities down into the vault. All right, And away. mind you, everyone, keep calm, cool, and collateral. Oh, Billy, aren't you scared? What for? Why, to think that terrible clipper might be hiding around here somewhere. Oh, don't worry about that. They'll catch him all right. Morgan! 
Oh, they will, will they? <gasps> Billy! <laughs> what was that? I... I don't know. Look. Somebody's coming out from back of the door. <laughs> Holy smoke. It's a huge pair of shears. Dragging a piece of... <gasps> Broken chain. I'll slice those greedy bonds into three parts, just the way I did Gaul. Then it was you who, who cut their coupons off. Of course. I gave them an imperial trimming. <laughs> and I'm not through with them yet. Oh, no. But why? Why are you doing that? A sitter is entitled to take his cut, you young fool. Ever since those vagabonds came down here, they have refused to pay tribute to me. Me, Julius Scissors! They thought me powerless because I was chained in a safe deposit vault. But I fooled them. <laughs> what they would not grant by right, I took my stealth. When they were sleeping, I came. I saw. I severed. <laughs> Destroy property. Sheer nonsense. No, it's not. Billy's right, Mr. Scissors. You're no better than a common thief. How dare you slander an emperor? You will pay for that, you insolent little creature. Oh. I'll slash your curls off. No, no. Get away. Don't you touch my sister. Billy, he'll hurt you. Help. Help. Red Lantern. I'll slice you to ribbons, you. Oh, no, you won't. that for an uppercut? Oh. We're coming. We're coming, Isabel. We're oh, great Atlantic and Pacific. What's going on here? Oh, Red Lantern, Bondo, that dreadful pair of tears tried to hurt us. What? You better chain him up before he comes to, Bondo. He's the clipper you've been hunting for. Julius Scissors. Julius Scissors? Is that what he called himself? Isn't it his real name? Oh, far from it. Why, that's old Snitch from the vault downstairs. Got lost from a bank where he used to cut coupons. He's had a screw loose for years, but we never thought he was dangerous. Sound the trumpet! Call my legion! Ah, there, Snips, now you come along with me. Uh, I'm mighty grateful, Billy, for what you've done. That's all right, sir. But what about my pal, Bondy? Yes, what about him, Bondo? It does seem curious we haven't seen a single government bond in the whole wagon. Government bond? Yes. United States government bond? Uh, well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, I thought I... No I'd... wonder you haven't seen him. Those government issues are all by themselves in the backyard. I'll just open that rear door. All right, Julius, on to the Capitol. Oh, my goodness. Uh, backyard, indeed. That's a fine place to keep the best securities in the world. Uh, uh, careful, Isabel. Someone's sitting on the top step outside. Uh, excuse me. I'll move up here. Thank you. Um, could you tell us where to find the government... Hold on, Isabel. He's one himself. See there? It says on his jacket, United States of America. Oh, goody. Then perhaps he can help us find Bondi. But Bondi, did you say? Yeah. My pal, Bondi. <gasps> but that's me. I'm Bondi. You are? You are me. Well, I'll be kippered. Oh, gosh, fella. You don't know what a time we had looking for you. Looking for me? We're Isabel and Billy, Bondi. We live next door to little Dick Brown. And Dick sent you to bring me back? Oh, gee. Am I glad? I was scared. I was lost for good. But, Bondi, well, that's why I was kind of moping out here by myself. Because I knew Dick needed me. Us two are good pals. And we got a lot of plans about growing up together. Growing up together? Oh, sure. In about ten years from now, we'll both be big boys. And I'm going to help pay for Dick's college education. And when he's ready to go, I'll get a free trip to Washington, D.C. That's where they send you when you're matured and cashed in, you know. Uh, I'm uh, I'm sorry, Bondi, but I'm afraid that trip to Washington is out. Out? Uh, Isabel and Billy can't take you back with them from the land of the law. They're not allowed to. You, you, you mean I'll never get a chance to do like I said? No, no, no. Don't feel too badly. Oh, it's not the trip to Washington, Mr. Redford. Honest, it is. Oh, it's just that the dick was counting on me to help us. Well, now, don't 
Don't you worry about Dick Bondy. The United States Treasury will give him a new bond to take your place if he reports your number. No, Kitty. Cross my fins and hope to fly. That's what we came here to get, your number. And I've copied it down already, see? Oh, gee. Thanks. Oh, you two are a hundred percent. Tadpoles, Tadpoles, be sure to tell Dick to write down the numbers of any other bond he buys. It saves a lot of trouble. I will, Red Lantern. I promise. And Bondy, we'll tell Dick all about you when we get back. So please, cheer up. It'd make him feel badly to think you were unhappy down here. <laughs> I'm not unhappy now, Isabel. I think the fun wagon is swell. I'm proud to belong to it. Even if they put you in the backyard, eh? Bundy, you're a sport. Oh, but you don't understand. The backyard is the best part of all. Why, you, you haven't seen what it's really like. Just come around the corner, huh? And take a look. There! not going to be lonely here, Bundy. Uh, I'll say he is. <laughs> Golly, there are hundreds of little fellows just like him working away together. Uh-huh, it's a savings garden, see? And they're planting pennies. Planting pennies? Uh-huh, sure. Come on, tell them about it, fellas. Okay, Bundy! <laughs> and quarters up on Earth, too, if you save enough of them. And if you put them into war saving stamps, those stamps will grow into bonds just like us before you know it. <laughs> but we've got to get back to work. How about it, Bundy? Uh -huh. Aren't you going to join the gang now? Oh, you bet I am. So long, Isabel and Billy, and tell Dick everything is just fine and dandy. Where's my own... Here you are. Let's go. Seven-time Polly was? So am I. You know, I get almost as much fun as you do out of the presents you win every week. And you'll hear this week's winners in just a second. First, though, here comes a surprise. We are extending the drawing contest for the best picture of Pistol Pack and Edgar the Bullfish until midnight, Monday, November 27th. That's to give you all a chance to get your drawings in. And what's more, we're adding three prizes. Yes, in addition to the grand splash prize of $10 for the winner, there will be a second prize of $5, a third prize of $3, and a fourth prize of $2. 
So hurry up now and get your drawings in. If you've already sent one, you can send another and double your chances of winning. And the prizes go to the pollywogs who send in the most logical and imaginative picture of Pistol Pack and Edgar the Bullfinch. Remember, he's no friend of yours, this Irish police fish, and he carries a pearl-handled pistol on his hip. You can use pen, pencil, crayon, watercolor, or oil. But the important thing is to draw Pistol Pack and Edgar the way you see him in your mind. And you have until midnight next Monday, November 27th, to get your drawing in the mail. But don't delay. The decision of our judges is final, and in case of a tie, duplicate awards will be given. And now, for the lucky seven. Here are this week's winners who sent in the best letters telling why they want their lost treasures back. First, Dale Cranford of Orlando, Florida, wins a chemistry set in place of his old one, which his sister borrowed and lost. Second, duplicate awards of school bags go to Carol Burmeister and her brother of Maple Heights, Ohio. Both lost their school bags when the family moved. Third, to Bart B. Holmes of Salt Lake City, Utah, we are sending a fine pocket knife. Among other things, Bart wrote, I sure do feel badly if I miss a single land of the lost program. But if I stop wiping dishes, Mother makes me turn off the radio. So I keep wiping so I can keep listening. Fourth, Helena Miller of Lockport, New York, wins a sterling silver Girl Scout ring. Helena writes she's never won anything in her life, and we hope this makes her happy. Fifth, Martin Kearney of Fort Wayne, Indiana, who has written four times, is now going to be the proud possessor of a fine harmonica. Martin is a leader of a Land of the Lost Club and a splendid example of the National Land of the Lost Club motto. Never say lost. Well, Martin never said lost. He just kept on trying until he won. Which reminds me to remind you to write and tell us about your Land of the Lost Club. Yes, we're interested to hear about every single one. The name of your club, how many members you have, and what you're doing. Every one of you wants to get in the swim and hear that a pin to represent your club has been placed on our huge map of Land of the Lost Clubs in the United States and Canada. And now, back to our presents. The sixth winner is Raymond Glassman of New York City. Myrtle and Sherlock, his pet turtles, wandered away while he was listening to our program. So we're sending a couple to take their place. And seventh, the pen and pencil set is on its way to Charlotte Hughes, 13, of Loganville, Georgia. Charlotte told us that she'll be sitting by her radio today listening with hopes as high as the sky. So congratulations to you, seven. And to those of you who didn't win, don't forget our club motto, never say lost. Remember, there's a Saturday in every week with seven more presents for the writers of the most interesting letters telling what treasures they've lost and why they want them returned. And in addition to the chance to win a present, you still have a chance to win the $10 Grand Splash Prize or one of the three additional prizes for a picture of Pistol Pack and Edgar the Bullfish. Remember, the time for getting your drawing in has been extended to midnight, November 27th. Now, that's next Monday night. So hurry up, send in your picture of the Irish bullfish wearing that pearl-handled pistol on his hip. Be sure to put your name, age, and address on each drawing and address it to the Land of the Lost in care of the Blue Network, Radio City, New York. And listen next week, all you tadpoles, for Isabel and Billy meet a globe-trotting tadpole, a real one who's just come back from a visit to that weird and wonderful place, the Earth. Tune in, same time over most of these stations, when Isabel Manning Houston takes you again to the land of the lost. <laughs> the Land of the Lost is an original story by Isabel Manning Houston. The director is Cyril Armbrister. Vocal arrangements by Peggy Marshall. Musical backgrounds by Dean Perrazzo. This is the Blue Network.